All right, ladies and gentlemen, friendly reminder, you have a test tomorrow, 25 questions, all multiple choice of. Uh, you also have a focus and a map due tomorrow. Hopefully you got your map done over the weekend so you don't have to do that tonight and you can focus on your focus. Focus on your focus, isn't that wonderful? Um, tomorrow we have a test, of course. Thursday we're doing a map. Friday I'm doing a lecture and then we are off for nine days. So we have three more wake-ups, friends. That's it. Here we go. On your whiteboard, we covered some big things yesterday, so let's cover them. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is it called when a foreign country takes over another country to exploit their natural resources? Good, what we got, Alex? Imperialism. Imperialism. On your whiteboard, what is it called when a foreign country takes over another country and only controls their economy only controls their economy. It only happens in China. God, what do we got, Amelia? Spheres of influence. Okay? A sphere of influence is only the economy. Imperialization, they take over government, culture, social, political, economic, the whole thing. A sphere of influence is only the economy. On your whiteboard, what is it called when a foreign country takes over indigenous land in order to create something? Okay, what do we got, Brady? Colonization. Colonization. Hopefully you see and you are hearing the term exploited means imperialism. Going and taking over territory and of course there's social, political, economic, uh, and there is exploitation to a degree in colonization. Is that the only reason they're there? No, there's other reasons. Imperialism, it is all about exploitation. So make sure we understand that difference. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is, uh, please tell me, what is it called when we have a small bit of real science that's been manipulated into something else? What do we call that? You didn't watch my lecture yesterday, huh? So, as you can see, that's not probably the best plan. Steven? Pseudoscience. Pseudoscience. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the, what country is going to start conquering territory because they lost the Franco-Prussian War? This is going to lead them to really uh, push in order to gain some self-esteem back. What do you got, Matt? France. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is used as a justification, but is one of the only few things that has positive upsides for the indigenous? No. Not specifically that. But if you tell me the people who are doing it, then this. Ben. Missionaries. Missionaries. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is, um, please tell me, what is it called? When? We, uh, white people, believe that they have the right to take the land because they've industrialized and they had enlightenment, which means because they've done these things, they have every right to do it because they have advanced beyond other people. What do we got, Abby? Social Darwinism. What is it called when white people have the right to expand because God gave them the land? Do we see a difference between the two? Macy? Manifest destiny. Manifest destiny is based on God's right. He gave us the land. We have the right to expand upon the land. Uh, <clears throat> when we talk about uh, hello, social Darwinism, it's because they're white. They've evolved because of industrialization and the age of uh, all of that. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is do, 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 do. Okay, all right, I think that's it for, that's a good strong review. All right, here we go. Okay, so yesterday, did we get to new imperialism? We ended on missionaries. Okay, so we ended on missionaries, so we gotta go. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, so new motivations for imperialization. Uh, imperialization, new motivations for imperialization. Okay, so the biggest thing is, is that industrialized countries need more raw materials. You need to write that down. Industrialized countries need 
more raw materials. England starts this. You need to note that. England starts imperial, uh, imperializing because they need more raw materials. Why is England the first one to really start doing it? It makes perfect logical sense. Why? John. They're the first to industrialize, so they're the first running out of their raw material. So people, uh, countries are going out looking for two things. You need to know that. Raw materials. What's an example of a raw material? Just to make sure. Huh? Coal would be. Cotton would be. Okay? Cotton, like I'm talking the white fluffy stuff that just got picked. Not in like a blanket or something. Okay, so they need raw materials and they need markets. What do I mean when I say a market? What do you have to sell to us? A place, people to buy the goods. People to buy the goods. So keep in mind, England is filled with factories and England has been industrialized for about 100 years at this point. Do you think all the people in England have all the stuff they need? Yes, yes but these factories keep pumping out like toaster ovens. Everyone in England has a toaster oven already. So this factory that makes toaster ovens has to find other people who don't have? There you go. So now they got to find these people who don't have toaster ovens and force them to buy these toaster ovens. That's what we're talking about markets. So now we have to go to other places to sell manufactured goods. Make sure you're tying manufactured goods to markets, ladies and gentlemen. So these countries are now looking for new territories for two things, raw materials, because they need resources, and they also need to sell all these manufactured goods. Everyone good? England's going to start this, then all of your industrialized countries are going to follow. Write that down. England starts this new type of imperialism where they're looking for raw materials and markets. England starts a bit all. Industrialized countries will follow, including the United States. We force Latin America to buy only our goods. All right. State expansion is our next heading.
you need to put a box here on Suez Canal because this is a huge deal. Okay, so they build the Suez Canal, which connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. So now it will increase worldwide trade. It is the busiest point on the earth. We all remember about a year ago that uh, boat that got stuck, right? <laughs> Stopped worldwide trade and it's back for like two weeks. Insane. Okay, that's the Suez Canal. It is built by the British with enslaved Egyptians. Let's make sure we know that. Okay, so the biggest thing that's happening right here is the Suez Canal and it's going to increase worldwide trade. And every boat that goes through, who makes money? Absolutely. So who's going to fight like hell to keep that for a very, 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 very long time? The English, but eventually the under Queen Elizabeth. And her first year as queen, you know, the one who's dying in Buckingham Palace, that one? Her first year as queen, the Egyptians take that, which is a huge, huge help. Anyway, British West Africa is your next subheading. West Africa, they are going to, I don't need you to know the territory, but I need you to know that they're going to spread uh, education, English, and Christianity in this territory, and they're mostly using it for the wrong materials. Uh, education, English, and Christianity. They're mostly using it for wrong materials. It doesn't really have that big of a One good thing that they are going to use because um, they're going to use it to stop slave trades. So the British are going to be the first ones to really get on the anti-slave thing and they're going to use these West Africans uh, now that they're under their control to stop the slave trade. So that is one positive thing. Okay, now you're going to write British control always comes with contracts. Every time the British show up, they always bring a piece of paper and force people to sign it. Okay? Now, these contracts are mostly meaningless, but it gives them the air of doing the right thing. And that's something that you need to know. Okay? So, they pretend to acknowledge the local, local rulers, but everyone knows who's actually in power. It's called indirect British are all about indirect rule. They allow local leaders to be there, but who actually has all the power? The British. They just pretend. Uh, they think it's more kind. Okay, so in the columns, I would write indirect rule equals British. Okay, indirect rule equals British. Okay, this is the nicer of your imperialism. It's the nicer one. Is it still imperialism? Yeah. Is it still wrong? Yes. Mm -hmm. However, it is the nicer of the two. French. Okay, the French are going to conquer Algeria from the Ottomans. Okay, so the French are going to take Algeria from the Ottomans. You need to know it becomes a settler colony. What does that mean? What does that mean, Ben? Um, they're kind of like, so they want to take over and kill them. Right, so yeah. Okay, so people are actually going to move there and live there. Did I say that when I talked about the British? No. No, only government officials are really showing up. Now, government officials with their families would show up to these British places, but the French are actually going to settle in Algeria, which on the flip side of all of this, when we get to the freedom of all these places on the other side, what is the last place the French are gonna give up? Algeria, because they have such a large population. population of French citizens who live there, so keep that in mind. So, it is a settler colony. French people are, at, white French people are actually moving there to live there, okay? You're also going to see that they are going to have a couple other smaller colonies trickle throughout Africa. But the biggest and most important one is Algeria, Algeria for sure. Okay, so those are the original colonies in Africa, and then we have the official 
racial separation and division of Africa are called the scramble of Africa. It's when Europeans begin competing for more and more territory. If you need to write it down, great. To me, it makes logical sense, so I'm just going to move on. So, competition, and this is what I would write down, competition becomes so heated for African territory that we have the Berlin Conference. So, competition between European nations gets so competitive that we have to have a conference about it. Okay, now, the Berlin Conference happens in 1884. You should be aware just of the timing of it. Not gonna, you don't need to memorize it, but just be aware of the timing of it, 1884. It is only European nations and U.S. We get invited because we wanted to be invited. We do not have a territory in Africa, as you know from your map. We do help Liberia. Liberia sends us messaging like, hey, we believe in liberty, and we love you, America. Can you help us? So we told all the European nations, you can't conquer Liberia because they like freedom, and they like us. So guess what? No one conquered Liberia. As America, shouldn't we have protected the whole damn continent? No? Okay, but that's a whole other issue for another day. Moving back to the Berlin Conference. It is only white people. No Africans are invited. You need to know that. You need to know that they are going to come up with the rules for dividing Africa amongst themselves. Okay, so a couple things you need to know is that they, they, and I would underline they, draw the new boundaries of these countries. boundaries of Africa today are? Pretty much. There are a little bit of, um, there's some differences, but they're pretty similar to what these original ones were. Okay, you also need to know that they were going to allow the movement of goods along all the rivers easily. <coughs> okay, so free movement of goods. and you're going to write, they do not value the lives of Africans. Okay? You don't need to write this part down, but they say you cannot kill another white person. They go over and over that again and again. You cannot kill another white person. But there are no laws for white people to kill Africans. It's just not even a topic of conversation. You cannot kill another white person. There will be penalties for white people killing white people. There is no acknowledgement of white people killing Africans. There is no acknowledgement for enslaving the Africans in work for low pay, aka like five cents a day because they're not slaves. No acknowledgement. It is only you can't kill white people. So very little regard for the African's life. Now, there are only two territories that do not get conquered. We do need to know this is a huge deal, and this is pretty pretty box. There's two territories that don't get conquered. Liberia, okay, is protected by the United States. Okay, and Ethiopia. Ethiopia, they defeat the Italians and remain independent for now. I would write for now because they're going to get reconquered in the 1920s. Now, they get defeated by Italy. Why do you think they get defeated by Italy? Why do you think Italy doesn't win? Italy is not, it's not fully industrialized. It's partially industrialized. They have some factories. They have some weapons. They have some things. But Italy got a little cocky saying, oh, we're white people. We can easily beat them. And the Ethiopians won. Who do you think is going to pay very heavily for this loss in the 1920s when Italy becomes fully industrialized? Ethiopia. Um, a guy named Mussolini is going to invade Ethiopia pretty much out of nowhere and kill about 350,000 women, men, and children because he can uh, with machine guns. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler alert, that's fun. And that's because of the embarrassing loss Italy had against the Japanese. According to yeah. reached out. Uh, they reached out to the U.S. and they came up with an agreement that the U.S. could send 
legs there. Warm our sites because then that leads us out into the war at this point. So any Africans who want to go back to Africa, the United States is trying to export as many as possible. So we had a bit of a relationship. All right, South Africa. Here we go. All right, so South Africa was Dutch. Won by the British and the Napoleonic Wars. Okay, so South Africa was Dutch, and now won by the British and the Napoleonic Wars. Okay. <clears throat> Afrikaners, it is A F R I K A N E R S. It's right here if you want to see it. Afrikaners, A F. Dutch descendants. Today in South Africa, Afrikaners are what we call white people. And I know this because my brother-in-law is in South Africa. Wait a second. Oh, good. Yeah, some East Side African is that one. So I just wanted to know I do have a personal connection with South Africa. Here we go. So these Afrikaners are Dutch citizens and they are with the indigenous over land. Okay, and it's called the Boer War, B-O-E-R, because British people who are fighting are Boers. Okay. Now, the funny thing is, and you don't need to know this for AP world anymore, but uh, the British came in and said, you know what, indigenous people, we don't want you here, you need to go. So they pushed them into a territory that looked pretty shitty and terrible. And when the indigenous got there, they started digging and they found gold. And they're like, yes, we got gold. And the British are like, shit. And then when they start the Boer War, because they were like, you gotta get out of that territory, we won't the territory. And they're like, hell no, we've got gold. No, you don't get it. And then they had a war. And guess who won? Um, anyway, so what's going to happen after the Boer War is we start getting a thing called concentration camps. Yes. Okay. So what we're going to see, uh, the British are going to punish them, and eventually we'll have a new system. Okay, so they put them in concentration camps, and the whole world's like, dude, you can't do that. Okay, we can't do concentration camps. So then what do they implement? Oh, come on. The apartheid system, yes, we should know this. Nelson Mandela who dismantles the apartheid system. So the British import a concentration camp. Everyone's like, dude, you can't do that. So they implement the apartheid system, okay? So the apartheid system is going to be the most effective, implemented, and strategized racial system in the world. The apartheid system is going to be the most effective, ooh, I don't know what that was, ooh, bouncy. The most effective <coughs> racial system used in the world. Gonna get into much more detail about the apartheid system but that's how they keep it. It is absolutely effective. They turn each other, the Africans, against each other. So if they're fighting with each other, they're not fighting with the? Mm -hmm. There you go. It is super effective. Is it disgusting? Yes. Is it horrible and atrocious? Absolutely. But it is way more effective than like our Jim Crow here in the United States. That was very effective, but not nearly as effective as the apartheid system. Um, and we're going to start making direct comparisons between the Jim Crow to the apartheid and what we'll see with Hitler's Germany. All right. Perfect. Okay. Next one. Congo. Doc, you better pick that head up, dude. I'm hustling real hard up here. Okay. So, your Congo is going to be conquered by Belgium. Okay. King Leopold II. wanted Belgium to take it. They didn't, so he did. It's a private colony, people. He 
personally owns a country in Africa. It's a private, private colony. It's private. What? It's his colony. It's his Belgium. colony. No, it's not Belgium. It's he colony. It's his. He paid for an army to go and conquer it in his name for him, and he paid for it all with his own private money. Now, put a big star. If the worst abuses of imperialism are happening here. So, if you were an African, where is the last place you'd want to be? Belgian Congo. It is the atrocities are horrendous. We have no idea how many people died, but we assume 8 million people are going to die. And that is from mass atrocities, not because of like famine or disease. These are going to be dying in mines, which is for diamonds and gold and other minerals. So yeah. It's like the worst place to be in Africa. It is the worst place because of the atrocities. Okay, so what he's going to do, his biggest thing is that he is looking for natural resources. He's going to, uh, the big thing is ivory, rubber, and eventually he'll find her out this diamond. You need to know it is the worst of all of your imperializing colonies. It is absolutely horrendous. And it's a personal colony. Isn't that just the wildest? I mean, his gamble does work. I mean, he makes $1.1 billion. But, I mean, at the death of 8 million people. Alright, in 1907, though, the country of Belgium is going to take it back, and you do need to know that. 1907, the country of Belgium take it back because of the atrocities committed by their king. Like, they're so embarrassed by how disgusting the king is to these Africans that they're like, oh shit, we should probably take this back. And so they take it out of his power. Alright, let's take a quick board break and then we'll go. Here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what do we call white people in South Africa? Good. What do we got? Emily? Afrikaners. Uh, South Africa originally belonged to what country that lasted in the Napoleonic Wars? Good. Isabel? Dutch. Dutch. Who now will own it until 1952? Good. What do we got, Elise? Britain. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of the conflict between the Afrikaners and the indigenous? This is going to lead to concentration camps and the eventual uh, implementation of the apartheid. Charlotte. The Boer Wars. The Boer Wars. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is it called when we divide up Africa amongst the European nations? Like the actual nations invading Africa and taking it. Good. What is it? Uh, what is it, Abby? Scramble for, Africa. Scramble for Africa. What is the name of the agreement created by the European nations to make the takeover of Africa for white people. Ready? Berlin Conference. Berlin Conference, and I didn't have you write this down, is led by what German leader? I told you this guy's name is going to keep coming up. Who is it, Nicole? Otto von Bismarck. Pretty much every time we talk about German leaders, it's only two. It's either going to be Bismarck or Hitler. And if it seems a little too early for Hitler, it's got to be. No, literally, this is how it is. There's really only two German leaders you need to know. And like, if it seems like it's a really long time this guy's in power, it is. So anytime anyone talks it, if it's too early for Hitler, it's only Otto von Bismarck. Default to it, it will always work. All right, on your whiteboard, please tell me what drug will allow white people to go to more equatorial places. Good. What do we got, Alexi? Quinine. Quinine. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of the most important French imperialized colony? It is a settler colony, and they will hold on to it 
took till the very end. What do we got? Steven. Algeria. Algeria. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is the mo what will be built by the British that will increase worldwide trade? They will hold on to it with death grips until there's a coup d'etat. What is it, Elise? The Suez Canal. The Suez Canal connects what two bodies of water? Good. Isabel. The Perfect. On your whiteboard, please tell me. When we start talking about imperialism, our industrialized countries need what two things from these new territories? Good. What are they? Macy. Raw materials and markets. On your whiteboard, what is the only private uh, colony in the world? Good. Victoria. Congo. Who is the gentleman? No, he, who is the piece of crap who owns the Congo? Good. Who is it? Dawson. King Leopold II. On your whiteboard, please tell me. Nope, that's it. Let's go. Okay. We are moving right along, guys. All right. Imperialism in Asia is your next setting. I did post the PowerPoint. Did you see? Okay. Well, if you go to week 14, you will see that I did post the PowerPoint for anything I did not post. And I am trying hard. Here we go. South Asia, parentheses, India, in case you didn't know. Okay. So. What you do need to know, everyone wants India. Okay, everyone wants India. Okay, however, it will be the British who finally take over the Mughal Empire. And with the British East India Trading Company, you do need to know that. So they justify the overthrow be, uh, behind the British East India Trading Company. Okay, so they take over the entire continent using sepoys. S-E-P-O-Y-S -E right here. Sepoys. Okay. So the British, of course, have started in India with the British East India Trade Company. They had a couple trading port cities, and now they are taking over the whole continent using sepoys. Sepoys are Indians who fight for the British. What do you got, Ben? Uh, the like the subcontinent, yeah. Uh, like all of India. Uh, no, 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 not like all of Asia, not like Mongols. Yeah, we're not doing Mongol side. We're just doing the subcontinent of India. Okay, so sepoys are, are Indians who fight for the British. They are super, super well paid in comparison to like the Indian soldiers. So, is this kind of a slap in the face? Yeah, because um, they're being conquered by super well paid Indians uh, taking over their territory. This will be known as the, crown, the jewel in the crown of British colonies. The most important colony to the British is India, because it has crazy amount of raw materials and it has a huge population. Because every country in imperialism needs what two things? <coughs> raw materials and markets. And India is the perfect example. So you need to know that the British are going to beat the Mughal Empire to take over India. East Asia. Okay, so East Asia is obviously China. What you're going to do is we are going to see there is internal turmoil in China with the Yellow Rebellion, uh, Taiping Rebellion, famine, and the Boxer Rebellion is right here. Famine, Boxer Rebellion. Okay, so because conditions are terrible, the British are going to, uh, the Europeans are going to create spheres of 
East Asia, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I think is a little trickier. I'm not going to lie, I think this is one of the harder ones. Okay, so, imperialism in Southeast Asia. We got the Dutch. Okay, so, now what we're going to see is that we still have the BOC, the Dutch East India Trade Company, is still in power. Okay, their major exports, ladies and gentlemen, are going to be C, uh, C, 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 rubber and sugar. Okay, and you need to know that it is the weakest of all the imperializing countries. So if you are going to be imperialized, the Dutch are pretty great because they're not very good. The British are really good, but they're tend to be friendly towards the natives. Um, the French are terrible, and the Congo, well, you know, we will bring this for it. All right, next one, the French in Southeast Asia. Okay, so the French defeat China to take Vietnam. take over Cambodia and Laos. This is all right here. This all becomes known as French Indochina. Okay, the biggest thing they're getting out of there is rubber. And they'll hold on to them until the 19th. start really seeing uh, pepper, tobacco, palm oil, and rubber, so super, super important colony for them. And eventually will be the largest producer of rubber in the world, which is quite the gold mine for them. So they have a ton. Okay, the biggest thing is they create Singapore. Let's just take a little gander and see where we are. How's that? Oh, we still have a lot more to go. Perfect. 
Yay. Here we go. American imperialism. We're going to streamline America for you. Does that make it okay with you? All right. So what you do need to know is that uh, we have a thing called the trail, uh, trail of Tears. We remove natives from the East Coast and Central to Oklahoma. The biggest movement is of the Cherokee. Okay, and it's part of the Indian Removal Act. The Trail of Tears. smallpox onto blankets and gave them to the natives on purpose of you know, forcing them to the dark web. So there you go. America. Monroe Doctrine! Okay, so the Monroe Doctrine says that no European nation can imperialize in Latin America. Because it's America. So are we protecting, okay, are we protecting them from and being imperialized or are we protecting them for us? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because when we originally did it, when Monroe put this out there, it was like, oh, we're going to protect these people. And then we started being like, but we could make some money off this and not be hurting them. Okay? A perfect example of it is the Mexican-American War, where we get lots of territories in the Southwest. That is going to be Arizona. New Mexico, but yeah, you know, Mexican, and there's, you know, American, Mexican War. Uh, Mexico and New Mexico and what the hell is that? We need to know manifest destiny, saying that the Americans had the right to take the land and that it was granted by God. So it's our God-given right. Now, when we say Americans, do you think we mean the black freed Americans or like the white people? White people. Because keep in mind at this time, and I'm just giving you a frame of reference here, we're giving any white person 40 acres and a mule if they go west. Now, keep in mind, we also just liberated about 6 million slaves, and we said, nay, nay, you don't get 40 acres and a mule. You have to stay here because we created the Jim Crow South, yes? And we created, you know, this whole new slave system that is not, you know, slaves because we paid them for five times the dollars. So, keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to buy Alaska and uh, we're going to buy Alaska, keep that in mind, and we're going to have the Transcontinental Railway to facilitate Manifest Destiny. Alaska was Huh? going to overthrow Hawaii's government. Has anyone here been to Hawaii? Have you ever been to non-tourist places in Hawaii? <coughs> you shouldn't. As a white person, I'm in the same boat, you shouldn't leave the tourist places because real Hawaiians, like the indigenous, like they hate white people because we overthrew, we had a coup d'etat, and 
we overthrew their government. Why? Because we wanted to import pineapple juice and sugar. So we overthrew. Does anyone know who led the coup d'etat? Dole! Dole! They're gone now. Huh? They're gone now. What? There's no more pineapple farms in Hawaii. That is not true. I was just at one like three years ago. I was at, in Hawaii like this summer. And the Big gone. Island, dude. You gotta go to the Big I Island. On the Big Island. And Oahu has them. Yes, there is. I can show you me standing next to a pineapple plant because I was, was so confused that that's what they look like. In my head, they look like they like hang from trees, but not. They're like they're like cactusy looking things. Kind of, yeah. It's weird. Yeah, and it takes four years to get a mature pineapple.